So I've been involved with a group called the Haitian Health Foundation. Um, it's based out of Connecticut, and there's a bunch of medical personnel, uh, doctors and nurses that go down, um, dentists as well, who go down and serve uh, the community there. It was founded 30 years ago by uh, an oral surgeon in a remote part of Haiti, and he built a clinic there that now serves 200,000 people. Um, they have vaccination programs, they have public health programs, uh, obviously uh, mine's more on the orthopedic front, so I do more of the orthopedic stuff there. But we have pediatricians and um, uh, primary care doctors who go there who work on TB and public health measures as well. Women give birth out in an open air foyer, so to say. Um, there are wild animals that kind of run through the open air hospital. Uh, it's not a place that most Americans would feel comfortable, I think, delivering their kids or having their surgery. Um, it's a stark and striking contrast from America. And if you haven't been to a third world country, you should go because it makes you appreciate all that you have. Uh, they, their patients are very grateful for anything you can do. There's, there's problems with cholera, with TB, with diseases that we don't really have in America. My role basically is there's a hospital there. I see people line up um, and come in and I, I see them and, and take them to the operating room, the ones that I can help, things like club feet, tendon injuries, uh, bone malformations. Uh, there's a lot of congenital disorders there. There's a lot of limits on what we can do there because um, of the equipment we have and, and the follow-up uh, is difficult, um, And uh, meaning the patients live out in the mountains and it can be hard for them to come back and uh, get any kind of therapy. There's really no physical therapy there. Um, so we have significant limits, but we try to focus on what we can improve, not on the things we can't improve. My first time to Haiti, I, I um, realized there was a number of, of kids with club feet there, and I am indebted to my partner, Paul Urbanek, who's a pediatric orthopedic surgeon, and uh, sort of taught me and talked me through some club feet. Club feet a lot of times can be corrected with tendon releases um, and casting, and so that's a good third world um, solution, meaning it's not dependent on a lot of heavy equipment. It's really uh, releasing tendons and trying to cast them in better positions. And then there are doctors there who can change the casting and uh, for the next two to three months try to keep the foot in a better position. People who have club feet have trouble walking and if, if you can uh, get the foot so that it's flat, it really can make a big difference in a child's life. It's the most humbling thing I do. Um, it, it's rewarding and frustrating at the same time. When you see a child with cerebral palsy and I have a picture of a little girl in a ballerina dress, when she comes in and she can't walk because her Achilles um, and hamstring tendons won't stretch and, and you need to do tendon releases again and can make a big difference for her, that's very rewarding. It's frustrating when um, you see people die of pneumonia or have hip dislocations that can't be put in because they weren't uh, seen in time. and it, it makes you think of all the good we failed to do um, as a society for third world countries. I think there are roles for lots of people. In fact, I get the question all the time, you're an orthopedic surgeon, um, you know, you, you can do something, what, what, what can I do? Um, and the, the short answer is there are, are people who come and go to orphanages and just rock babies and help malnourished babies by feeding them. Um, there are a lot of orphaned kids there from the earthquake from a few years ago. And so um, just really taking care of kids um, is an easy way for lay people to, to help.